Hi, it's Mark here from Onlook. Today's review, we're going to look at the Sky Intelligence Orbit. Now, the Orbit is an aircraft that most people will probably not have heard of. The Orbit was originally produced uh, via Kickstarter. Uh, the first examples made their way out to backers around about June or July 2016. So it's been around for a little while, but in very small numbers so far. And I presume that Sky Intelligence will be looking at a major release soon. Now, similar to some aircraft like the Unique Breeze, Sky Intelligence's idea for the Orbit was to create a social sharing drone. This is an aircraft that can link to your social media accounts. This is an aircraft that can follow you around, take selfies, and basically provide you with a, a new perspective on uh, your images that you would share on websites, um, on services like Twitter and Instagram, etc. So we'll take a look at what's in the box, have a look at some of the unique features, and then we'll get it outside and see how it does in the air. So the box contents won't be a huge surprise to anybody. Um, standard style props, although for a change they're not instant locking ones and you're going to have to screw them on just like normal. Um, another nice intelligent battery charger. And you get one battery with a standard kit, although other ones are available. It's another three cell uh, 5100 milliamp hour battery, which uh, Sky Intelligence say will give you around 20 minutes of flight time. Now, the Orbit's most interesting feature is this. This is a GPS-equipped tracker bracelet. So the idea is that to enhance the active track modes, um, rather than just purely using contrast and color tracking, the aircraft will also be able to look at the GPS signal from this. Now, the Unique Breeze, the Mavic, the Phantom 4, um, all these aircraft will be able to speak to uh, your phone and use the GPS signal from that to enable tracking. So, it's interesting to see how the orbit functions when it's using a signal from its own device rather than looking at your phone. And the aircraft itself is a very attractive airframe. Um, there's definitely some high production values have gone into this here. We've got carbon fiber styled arms, um, LED lighting across the outside of the two wings for want of a better explanation. And the whole thing certainly looks relatively slick. We have, similar to the breeze, a single tilt camera so no gimbal again, so again, stabilization is going to be one of the major issues that this aircraft potentially has. One very slick feature of the uh, Orbit is the fact that it has a touch sensitive on button. So just to make sure that it looks particularly good, to activate the aircraft with a battery installed, all you need to do is rest your hand on top for a few seconds. It'll light up with a beautiful bright blue LED, it'll kick in the lights on the underside, quick chirp from the ESC so you know it's all functioning, and then it will start booting up. Now, similar to other aircraft we've looked at recently, such as the Unique Breeze, the Orbit, once it's powered up and has self-tested, will activate its own Wi-Fi network. You connect to its Wi-Fi network with an iOS um, device. Android app is on the way, I believe. And then once you've uh, connected to it, you control everything through its bespoke app. So we'll look at that very, very shortly. In terms of other functions that the aircraft has, um, it has the now almost ubiquitous um, infrared and optical sensors on the underside to make sure that it can see where it's going. Uh, you can see the battery cover on the bottom side there, so that's where your battery fits in. But all in all, it's a very nice package. As mentioned earlier, the Orbit is controlled by its own bespoke iOS app. iOS is your only option for this, unlike most other aircraft. There's no Android version out yet, although one is apparently in the works. Once we're connected to its Wi-Fi signal, which it starts generating after being on approximately 45 seconds or so, uh, you simply tap your way into the app. Now down at the bottom, you have the uh, social media based features that are becoming more popular now. There's the My Account section on the far right down there. Uh, there's the Community section, which allows you to view um, photos and videos uploaded by other Sky Intelligence users uh, around the world. And of course, there's a gallery option which allows you to download the images that are stored on the aircraft. The aircraft has no external access whatsoever. Uh, there's no removable storage and there isn't, there isn't even a USB port that you can use to directly access the aircraft. So in order to get any imagery out, uh, you need to download it to your tablet or to your phone uh, via the gallery, first of all. Now, once we're connected to the aircraft itself, we have a power button down there that we can use to switch the drone off once we're finished using it. And if we hit the connect button, and we're presented with the main screen of the app itself. Um, usual sort of style of controls. It's obviously inspired by um, apps like the DJI Go app for their products. 
At the top here, we can see that it's telling us we're connected to the drone itself, and it tells us the number of satellites the aircraft's managed to find. On the left-hand side there, the little target symbol, uh, shows us the number of satellites being received by the separate tracker. So more on that when we've got the aircraft outside and we're flying properly. You can switch between camera and video, and, uh, video modes at the top there. And you've got your settings for the camera that pop out there. Uh, you can vary the resolution, the usual ISO, white balance and frequency settings that you would expect. You can see in the middle of the screen obviously we have our usual Mode 2 style controls. Modes 1 through 3 are available. And in the centre, all you need to do is drag your finger up and down to adjust the gimbal. There's not a great deal of adjustment available on it. You can see there that uh, 90 degrees to minus 35 is about the maximum it can do. So you are going to need a bit of altitude before the aircraft can see you. Buttons on the left hand side enable us to enter tracking mode, only available once airborne, and enable the one click return to home system. Now the information bar down the bottom, the green bar at the very bottom there shows the current battery status and then it's backed up by a percentage mark here. No access to uh, raw voltages, unfortunately. The other two battery symbols there are the tracker in the middle, and then your phone or tablet on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you've got the uh, altitude of the aircraft, so you can see it's giving me 0.3 feet right now using the optical sensors because it's sat on the floor, the distance to you, and the aircraft's speed. To get the aircraft airborne, you simply tap the takeoff button and then it gives you the usual swipe to confirm dialogue that we'd expect. So we'll look at that more when we get the aircraft outside. At the top, if you pop up your little, uh, the little pin button there, you can get access to a moving map and you've got the usual settings to adjust. You can change the tracking range of the aircraft to have it follow you from a greater range. Adjust your joystick mode. Look at the settings, whether you want them fixed or floating and adjust the sensitivity. Change its Wi-Fi password, for example. And then you can get some more detailed battery information here. There's a way to activate the compass calibration. And you can also set the aircraft up so it's paired to its own remote controller. Um, this allows you to uh, access an ATI style mode and disable GPS. And it allows you to fly the aircraft um, exactly as you would something along the lines of a Phantom. Um, it does disable tracking mode and uh, we'll sample that later on. You can just tell it whether it's flying over land or if it's flying over a transparent surface like water, which is a useful setting. And of course, change metric to Imperial. All relatively simple to use. So let's get the aircraft outside. We'll get it airborne. We'll see how it flies with this. We'll see how it flies with the controller. And then we'll have a look at all the tracking modes.